Okay, let's dive into Gutenberg and get a quick tour and familiarize, I hate saying that word, I almost screwed it up, familiarize ourselves with the new editor. When you first install the plugin, or if you're watching this in 5.0, this is probably the default thing that'll show up. WordPress created a brand new blog post for me called Welcome to the Gutenberg Editor, and they have a lot of handy information right here in the blog post. They go over a lot of the different changes and the tools and what they're trying to do with this update. Let me just run through it. We'll go over individual blocks and how to, a, a little, little like step-by-step -step system in the next video. Right now, just let me give you a big overview of how this editor works. And to do that, I'm going to create a brand new blog post right here. It's going to be completely blank. You'll see that the one big editing area is no longer here. They used to have like a little bar for title or whatever, uh, your URL, your permalink, and then like a huge HTML section. Everything was in one big square, one big block, so to speak. Well, WordPress Gutenberg just converted everything to blocks. Think of it like Legos. They even use this analogy on their own documentation. You just build your WordPress blog post or page using blocks. And blocks could be any number of things, paragraphs, headlines, images, video embeds, a ton of other stuff too. We're gonna like sample that in a second. Let's walk through this area right here. And the good news and bad news. The good news is if you mainly did some images and some text for your blog post, nothing too fancy like custom HTML and divs or embeds or whatnot, you could pretty much just type like a normal blog post and you should be okay. I'm gonna add a title here. This is a title. Write your story. So let's write an intro sentence. This is the first sentence. I'm gonna hit enter right here. Enter. This is the second. I love to blog all the dang time. Hit enter. I'm just hitting enter. You'll notice it looks a lot like the old editor. So far, nothing has changed. You just keep hitting enter. Behind the scenes though, look what it's doing. These are all separate blocks. Every time I've hit enter, these are paragraph blocks. You can see the name of it right there. And it's creating a new paragraph block every time I hit enter. This is both good and bad. We'll talk about that later on. But right now, you'll just know that if you just wanna type, if you just wanna like keep writing, there's no need to add a separate block for each paragraph, you just hit enter. And WordPress kind of figures it out. Gutenberg is fairly smart like that. Um, so an image, the same thing. Let's say I want to drag this image of a guy who is in a money machine. There's money and I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, I just drug the image in like you might do in the old editor and it's right there. You can even see if I try to do it again, it even allowed me to kind of pick where it was. Not too bad. My big takeaway with all this, again, we'll go through each of the blocks separately in the next video, but my big takeaway is if you're just doing normal blogging, this is actually not that different. Gutenberg is actually not that different. You can uh, click over here to remove this block. Let's say I had an extra space right here. You'll see the extra space, I hit enter. You can actually just pretend it was the old editor and hit delete, and now it's gone. It deleted the block. It's pretty intuitive, it's pretty smart like that. Let's go into, so that's pretty much the editor, by the way. You just add blocks by a few different ways, by the way. If you hover over the bottom of it, you'll see an add button right here, which you can click and add any block you want to. You can also click right here. If you hover over a block towards the top, it's kind of hard to get to appear at the moment, I'm not gonna lie. You'll see another little insert block. It inserted one right above the one I was hovering over. And you can also just kind of wherever you're at in your blog post, click the add button right up here, add block. It's the same sort of thing. So that's pretty much the only three ways to add blocks aside from just adding a paragraph blocks by hitting enter a few different things you can access the settings on each block in two areas one when i click on one i'm gonna click this image here you'll notice the sidebar changed this is the block settings you can put alt text to this image uh, image size you can change it i'm going to put it as medium actually i'm going to undo that full uh, you can change the width and height. You can link to advanced settings, which would put it as a custom class. We'll talk about that in the next video. But this is where you access your block settings, one of two places. The other one, I'm gonna click on this paragraph. You'll see this changed. This is now my paragraph block settings. I can make this text large, colors. We'll do more of that in the second video. You can also access the text, uh, different, different settings, not actual the content. This is like the content settings. This is the block settings, right? 
This is where you change what's actually in the block. This is where you change stuff about the block. You can edit as HTML, that's handy. I can change that if you know HTML. Edit visually, go back, there we go. You can duplicate, that's actually pretty handy. I love this, and then you can move it up or down. You can't drag and drop yet, that's coming in a future WordPress Gutenberg update, so they say. Right now, you can just uh, click down or up a few times and move the block around, that's handy. So what else we got here? You can add two reusable blocks. We're gonna talk about that separately in the next video, but this is where you find that. Add to a reusable block that you can you know, customize with colors and sizes and all that great stuff, then save it. For the future, you can just add in that custom block. Pretty handy. So it looks like most WordPress plugins, you can see I use Yoast SEO, a lot of bloggers do that. This is kind of where the old SEO Yoast was. Now in Gutenberg, Yoast actually just released this today. I can click this and here are my, I don't have any of this filled in, but this is my Yoast settings. It's now gonna be in the sidebar. I have a feeling that most plugins that have meta content, as in stuff that would be like down here, this is stuff for my theme, by the way, like scripts. Most of everything that was down here below the post, I have a feeling will be added to this. You see what I clicked right there? This is the three bars. Even if I didn't have Yoast, let's go back. There we go. This will still be here. This is like the editor settings. Right now it's visual editor, which is what we're looking at right now. Code editor, it, by the way, if you don't know PHP, PHP or HTML, don't ever press this button and mess with things. Because right now it's like super complicated. But in the future, you can come in here and mess with the Gutenberg code. As you can see, it's not just HTML. There's some other weird stuff going on in here. Uh, I'm assuming this is like WordPress dev PHP stuff. Go back to the visual editor for a second. You can actually play around with a few different settings right here. Fix toolbar to the top, show tips or turn the tips off, etc. And then you can see there's an area for plugins. Yoast SEO just updated. I'm assuming more WordPress plugins are going to be updating to show some stuff over here in the sidebar. And you can see I can toggle that on and off with this button right here just like the settings. This is the settings, I can hide settings and just have the editor. Yoast actually created me another little menu item, so to speak. I can get Yoast right here, it's pretty handy, right? I think a lot of plugins are gonna go that direction. You'll notice save draft, same place it's always been, preview, that'll open up this in a new window. Oh, doesn't that look good? Right there, that's pretty great. Uh, sorry, publish, same sort of thing. Now, right here is where you access your old document settings. Like if you wanna schedule it out in the future, you wanna revert back to a draft after it's already published, you want to make it sticky to the homepage, add categories, tags, featured image, excerpt if your theme supports it. This is my theme right now. Uh, discussion settings, allow comments, don't allow. Post templates, right, if you have that on your theme. Yours might look a little bit different than this, but you can find this right here. As you click through a block, I'm about to click one, you'll see it's gonna revert back over to the block settings. Click that, now it's back over to block. So that's where you find that. Just click document. This is where your old published settings and your images and categories, that stuff is. One other cool thing, and then I think that'll be the end of this video, this little menu bar up here. You can ignore this, I have the Elementor, plug Elementor plugin. You may not have that, don't worry about that, yours won't have this. This little eye icon will show your content structure. Oops, that was interesting. It's not showing uh, the HTML right now, probably because I don't, oh, I don't have a title. So this is currently a paragraph block. I'll go ahead and switch this block up right here. I want to make this a different kind of block. I'm gonna make it a heading. This is gonna be an H3 or an H2, something like that. I just changed it. You'll notice I can change, I can click this and change it to a quote or a paragraph or a cover image. I can change the blocks around. But I added a little H2 right here. This is the second, this is an H2. Now when I click this, you'll see it has my document outline. This is gonna be cool for SEO purposes. Right now, here's a hint at a problem that Gutenberg has. This might be fixed by the time you watch this video, and if so, I'm sorry. But right now, if you were to add custom HTML, like this is an H2 block, that's literally like, it has a headline block, that's the name of it. It's a heading, it's a heading block. Uh, if you add in custom HTML and put an H3 tag or an H2 tag, it will not show up in this document outline. It's kind of annoying, hopefully they fix that. But for now, you can see the words, the paragraphs, the number of blocks you have. Do I really have 18? 
I don't think so. It doesn't look like 18 blocks. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. 16 paragraphs, one heading. It has the title. It has the H2. As I add more H2s and H3s, those will show up right there along with the text. It's pretty handy. Pretty cool. Other than that, again, this is how you can add more blocks. It kind of inserts it wherever you're... You can see when I hover over these, there's a line, a blue line right here. That's where inserting it. I go insert some custom HTML right here and add a div class equals boxed paragraph. You can see it's a, a nice little HTML editor, etc., etc. You can do that here. Whoops. Again, undo, redo. You know what those buttons are. That's pretty much it. That's the full tour. This is your editing area, the visual layout right now. You can change it to the code layout up here, code editor. I wouldn't suggest that for right now. We're gonna tour the blocks in the next video, but that's pretty much it. A lot of plugins will be coming over here like Yoast and have little menu items, I think, I presume, where you can see their settings. Here's my readability, focus keywords, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's it. In the next video, we're gonna move on and talk about <laughs> more of a, a how-to guide on how to use normal blogging blocks, updating the permalinks, updating what you would normally have in the old editor. We're gonna go through that step-by-step step in the next video.